In this lesson, we're going to answer two essential questions. How do I draw and interpret a box plot, also known as a box and whisker plot? And how do I calculate the interquartile range for a set of numerical data? So let's take a look at this set of numbers, numbers 1 through 11. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out the median, the first quartile, and the third quartile, just like we did in our previous lessons. Let's see, crossing them off, working my way to the middle. Got to get my median. And it looks like our median is 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line and I'm going to write it above the 6. And now I've got my lower half, which is 1 through 5, and my upper half, which is 7 through 11. Remember, 6, the median, does not get included in the lower half, nor does it get included in the upper half. It's separate. All right. Let's cross them off, work our way to the middle for the lower half, and it looks like 3 is our first quartile or our lower quartile, and I just put a line above it. There's our line. And then upper half, let's see, it looks like it's going to be 9. I'm going to put a line above my 9, and there you have it. I have three lines for my median and my third quartile and my first quartile. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to connect them. I am going to make a box from my three lines. The center of my box has the median, the six, and the ends of my boxes of my box has uh, the first quartile and the third quartile, three and nine. Well now, if I want to make a box plot, I'm also going to need whiskers because a box plot is also known as a box and whisker plot. My whiskers are simply my minimum and maximum data values. That means one and 11. 1 is the minimum, 11 is the maximum. And all I'm going to do is draw lines connecting my box to my, ma uh, to my minimum and maximum. They make the whiskers of my box and whisker plot. Pretty simple. Now, what's really cool about box and whisker plots is they also show percentages. Think about this for a second. Your median, your first quartile, your third quartile, what they do is they um, break up your data into four parts, four sections, fourths, also known as quarters. So because of that, you have quarter sections, or another way to look at it is the 25% sections. That means from here to here, that's 25% of your numbers. From here to here, that's 25% of your numbers. From here to here, that's 25% of your numbers. And from here to here, that's 25% of your numbers. Simply because the quartiles and the medians have broken those, those numbers up into your four sections, your quarters. You could also write them as fractions if you wanted. And what's really cool is the box, since it shows two 25% sections or two quarter sections, that represents a total of 50 percent. Half of your numbers are between the first quartile and the third quartile. Kind of cool. Okay, let's look at workbook page 343. We're going to compare a dot plot with a box plot. Um, the dot plot and box plot below represent the same set of data. This is the same numbers. A box plot is a graphic summary that shows the median, the quartiles, and the minimum and the maximum values of a set of data. So if you look at these numbers here, all of these numbers have been translated into a box plot. It looks like we have a median of 5, and it looks like we have a first quartile of maybe that's 2.5, so the first quartile is somewhere down here. And then our third quartile looks like it's seven and a half, which is right about here. So what we've done is we've taken this data and we've turned it back into a box and, or turned it into a box and whisker plot. And we've got our two quartiles, our median, and our minimum and maximum values. In which display, the dot plot or the box plot, is it easier to identify the median and quartiles of the data? Give a reason to support your answer. Well, obviously a box plot the box plot is easier to use 
to identify the median and quartiles because they make up the box. Simply, they're here. Here's your first quartile, here's your median, here's your third quartile. Because they're part of the box, it's easy to identify them. Okay? How about three, um, still on page 343, but number two. Use the box plot to name the median, the quartiles, the minimum and the max minimum and maximum values of the data, and then explain how you know. All right, well, our median, that's five. That's right here. And our first quartile is two and a half, because that what looks like it's right in between the two and the three. Third quartile, seven and a half, because it looks like it's right in between the seven and the eight. And then our minimum is 1, our maximum is 9. And yes, you can see that here in the dot plot, but obviously it's also right here in the uh, box and whisker plot. Explain how you know. Um, all the data values can be found in the box or in the whiskers. In which data display, the dot plot or the box plot, is it easier to identify the range into which one half the data can be found? Explain your answer. Well, yes, you know for range you just have to subtract the highest and lowest numbers, but this one's a little special because they're asking about that one half. And if you remember earlier, we talked about how in a box plot, you can break your sections up into fourths, because that's what the median and the quartiles do. They break it up into four equal parts. And we talked about how that box in the middle actually shows two fourths, or 50% half of your data. Since we're talking about one half the data, and we're talking about the range of half the data, it probably means to subtract the third quartile and the first quartile. Here's your third quartile, here's your first quartile, and we would subtract them to get the range of 50% or half the data. So I'm thinking the box plot um, is easier to use to get the range of half the data because the box shows half the numbers or 50% of the data. Okay? Now at the bottom, Let's practice making a box plot. Now, I don't know about you, I like to uh, take the numbers out of my dot plot and then use them to put them in order and work my way to the middle to get the median and all of that. Another, let me have a 26, another 26, four 27s, four 28s. and then a 29. Let's see, I'm going to work my way into the middle. And it looks like 27 is the median. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line above 27 on this number line over here. And now, let's see, I'll use a different color. I'm going to cross them off in a different direction in my lower half and in my upper half to get my first quartile and my third quartile. Remember, the median cannot be included in the lower half, nor is it included in the upper half. So that means this 27 here does not get included in either half. Remember that. So let's see, 23, 27, 25, 26, 25, 26. Looks like this 25 here is my 
lower quartile or my first quartile. 27, 29, 27, 28, 28, 28. And it looks like this 28 here is the upper quartile or the third quartile. And there I have created the box. Remember, the box has the median and the two quartiles. And the last part, all I have to do is draw um, lines above the minimum and the maximum and connect them with my whiskers. And there's my box and whisker plot. On page 344, we're going to answer a couple questions at the bottom. I'm skipping the top. You'll have to do that on your own. It says three summaries of data displayed by a box plot are shown at the right. Use the summaries for exercises 7 and 8. Suppose 37.79 is a value in the set of data. Where in the set is 37.79? Explain your answer. Well, let's see. It looks like 37.79 would probably be in between the median and the third quartile. Um, so it's definitely in the middle 50% because it's between, you know, the first quartile and the third quartile, which shows you 50% of your data. So it's definitely in the middle 50%, but it's, it's way closer to the third quartile than the median. So let's see. Um, it is in the middle 50% but closer to the third quartile than the median. How does the range from the median to uh, the first quartile compared to the range from the median to the third quartile and what does this suggest about the spread of the data so what I'm talking about here is you know range is when you subtract the highest and lowest well what if you're subtracting or finding the difference between the median and the first quartile and the median and the third quartile so I'm talking about taking 16.02 which is the median and subtracting out 13.5, which is my first quartile, um, but also finding the difference between the third quartile, 44, and taking out the median, which is 16.02. And just by looking at these, without even doing the subtraction, you can probably see that the range between the third quartile and the median is going to be way bigger than the range between the median and the first quartile. Um, so this suggests that the range is going to be um, more spread out between the median and the third quartile than it is from the median and the first quartile. So um, the range from the median to the third quartile is more spread out then the range from the median and the third oh, I'm sorry then the first quartile all right the last thing I want to do is I want to talk to you about inner quartile range in a box plot Q1 is often called the lower quartile. Q3 is often called the upper quartile. The interquartile range, or IQR, is the difference between the upper and lower quartiles. And it's a way to describe the spread of the, da of the data. When we talked about range, we talked about range being a measure of variability. It tells you how varied the data is or how spread out the data is. Well, the same thing can be done with the interquartile range. The difference with interquartile range is that you're not subtracting the highest and lowest numbers in the data set. That would be like subtracting the maximum and the minimum values. In this case, we're subtracting the third quartile and the first quartile. You're finding the range of the numbers that are basically part of your box in your box plot. So if you look at um, 345 number 9, we're going to calculate the interquartile range of box plot A, and then we're going to calculate the interquartile range of box plot B. 
So the first one for number nine, we have a uh, third quartile of seven. Let me get my pen going. And our lower quartile, which is three. So if I want to subtract the inner quartile or find the inner quartile range, I need to subtract my upper and lower quartiles. And that's going to give me an inner quartile range of four. And then for number 10, looks like my upper quartile is seven and a half. My lower quartile is one and a half. And if I were to subtract those, I'm going to get six. So they have two different inner quartile ranges. Compare the inner quartile range of box plot A to the inner quartile range of box plot B. What does the comparison suggest about the spread of the data in plot A when compared to the spread of the data in plot B? So the, oops, the inner quartile range, it's supposed to be an I there, the inner quartile range of box plot A is lower um, and the data is not as spread out as box plot B. So box plot box plot B, since it has a greater interquartile range, I know that the data is a little more spread out. The data varies more and has a greater variability. Okay, so here we have your takeaways. We have the definitions for box plot and interquartile range. And what you have to remember is um, with medians and quartiles, they divide the set of data into four equal parts breaking it up into your fourths, and you can see that by this diagram. And also, if you look underneath the inner quartile range, I know it's kind of down at the bottom, the greater the inner quartile range, the greater the spread or variability of the data.